quarters as it was in the Futures game. As leaping high team Grundy, they're getting the win through Smith in the ruck. Ball at ground level and there'll be a further ball up. As umpire swings at Skyward, Smith from the side and it's going to be Team Grundy towards 50 with the high kick, bouncing football, knocked down and a chance to clear. As with the footy we see Robins run down in the tackle. That was Xavier Robbins and the free kick coming back here will go the way of Team Grundy and Tom Emmett. So Emmett 55 from goal, pops it up towards the hot spot. Knocked down off hands, coming through, trying to crumb their Poulter in the end. Over the line, at a play for a throw-in in the first quarter. We've been going just the one minute. Coulter won the initial clearance in this contest and now pushing forward inside 50 uh, to try and get uh, further possession as well. At uh, The handball will come out, though, towards uh, Powell uh, for Team... Uh, Hearn, he butters up for a second possession in that chain. Tom Powell is an accumulator of a lot of the footy in uh, ga- in the games across this 2020 season. A couple of early possessions already for Tom Powell as the kick goes short to uh, Robbins. Xavier Robbins, grandstand wing, has a looking board, nothing doing. He's going to go long up the line, marking contest. Thud as the ball comes to the front of the pack there, taken at speed by uh, Kramer. Dribbles a kick inside, 50 ball spills. To the back of the pack, can't uh, clean take by McCreary. Not able to be done on that occasion. Ball spills out now by hand to Big Smith. He looks to link back with uh, Fairbrother. And an opportunity now for uh, Newchurch for uh, Team Hearn. Kicks the ball in board. An option is free there in Edwards. Luke Edwards, 55 metres out from goal. Would almost be able to get the journey from here. He's not going to set sail for home, though. He's going to go short to a leading option. It's a good kick and finds his target in Brady Lake, about uh, 35 metres out on a pretty sharp angle. Brady Lake, the uh, Central District footballer, will line up for goal in a shot that, uh, well, as we've seen from the early game, John, is, is gettable with that breeze blowing from right to left. Can hang this out at the right post and give it every chance. It's a good kick. It's a very good kick. He puts it enough out to the right for it to hold its line. And we have our opening goal in today's contest, and it goes to Brodie Lake. And uh, Team Hearn have one straight goal on the board. Team Grundy yet to score. And Brodie Lake, as we said, from the Central Districts Football Club. Great finish there from Lake, Danny, with that goal. Yeah, it really was. And I thought it was a brilliant pace and movement there by Newchurch as well. Yeah, he's got a lot of tags about him, Newchurch. He's a lot of people talking about him. He's obviously a talent. We're seeing... Some of the best young talent out here tonight, as we said, repeating in the earlier game, it was Team Smith defeating Team Ebert by eight points in the Futures game. This is the all-star contest. Three and a half minutes gone, first term. It's big Smith in the ruck, big tall. They must be about six foot eight, six foot nine, ball at ground level. Dishing out the handball there. Young. Chance now to clear as it comes out in the direction there of Wanganeen on this member's wing. And nice little pass. Some run shown here from Clifton. His kick, though, chopped off by a diving effort there from Powell, who, as John Simon said, is a real accumulator of possessions. He goes short and finds Edwards. They chip it round some more, Team Yellow, and they bring it to the run of Robbins on this member's wing or club room wing. Robbins didn't sit for him, went back in, took on Clifton, but was run down in the tackle. Good contest between those two. And the umpire will come in. And ball this one up. Was lucky not to get holding the ball there. He was. It was great chase, chase down by Clifton. Great sort of second effort. It was his kick, of course, that was chopped off early. He wanted to make amends for that. You feel as Poulter got the handball out to Big Smith. Back to Poulter. Wrapped up in the tackle. Strong tackle. Somehow shuffled the handball out. And Team Yellow keep persisting. Attempted kick there from Durden. Chance now, though, at half forward. No one can really take clean... Possession of the footy. Wanganeen got it up over the top now to Poulter. He's got a few touches early. Tight on the boundary line. I think it might have just gone over. No play on the call. Nice little link-up work there with the handball from Spain. It's going to fall down here at half forward. You feel perhaps one handball too many. 
and getting in the way and stealing the footy is Powell. Might get it back in the one-two here for Powell. No, kick comes out in the end of the free option there and Luke Edwards takes his second mark early in this contest. Just going to slow things down now. Emmett uh, patrolling the mark, umpire calls play on and Edwards kicks long up the line now, standing strong in that marking contest with Smith, big Henry Smith. The Eagles ruckman takes the mark almost unopposed in the end, kicks the ball long, right half forward. One for the high flies, no one can take the mark. Ball spills to the back of the pack, well trapped by Grieve, by hand towards Chamberlain. He's going to look to go backwards by hand to Parrish. He uh, takes possession of the ball, his handball couldn't then be collected by Potter. Opportunity now for Team Grundy to go inside 50, but standing in the way and taking a defensive mark uh, was uh, Parrish for the... Uh, Team uh, Hearn. Got to get used to Hearn and Grundy now, John, yes. after having Ebert and Smith in the earlier game. Uh, possession now remains with Team Hearn. Kick towards the grandstand wing. Standing tall in that marking contest was hearing. Goes by a chain of handballs now. Links back towards uh, right. He's run himself into a little bit of trouble. Back towards hearing. They've turned the ball over and it's taken now by Burgoyne. Steps around, kicks inside 50. Spoil to the front of the pack. Crummer there, waiting for possession was Clifton. His left foot shot on goal was not too bad, but just drifts across the face of goal. Narrow miss there for the young Panther, Max Clifton. It's the opening score for Team Grundy. They're one behind. Team Hearn, a one straight goal. Six and a half, almost seven minutes gone in this opening term. Bring it back into play. Uh, it's going to be a chance there with a little handball over the top from player in Draper. Probably lucky not to be holding the ball in the end in that contest, but held in at 50. That's 50 for Team Grundy. They've got the one behind. Team Hearn, one straight goal. Then the ruck wrestling desperately there was Holder. Ball inside 50. Play on advantage, and they're going to take it here with a little twist kick around the corner there from Liddy, and that will be the first goal to Grundy, just dropping it across the boot, little check side, and so Liddy has the first goal there for Team Grundy, and they take the lead, 1-1-7 to 1-6, straight six. And we've gone seven and a half minutes in this first term, Danny. Yeah, it's, it's been really great so far. Both teams are really having a crack and, and doing really well. And um, as John said earlier, it's great to see the best of SA's talent um, all in one spot. They've had a big afternoon, that's for sure, with the Futures game. And now this All-Stars match here at Feberton Oval. The lights are on. It's just dark out there, but our screens, your screen you're getting there on advertiser.com.au, nice and bright, bring you all the action. All right, centre stoppage now. One point, the difference as uh, Smith jumping up at this one probably had the better of that one, but the clearance will be taken by the opposition. Chamberlain wheels around one. His kick wasn't what he was after, and a turnover in the middle of the ground, picked up by Spain, handballed to Nelligan. He ends out, heads out wide and retains possession out of wing. I think it might be O'Loughlin out there. No, Horsner it is. Kicks it along inside, 50 ball spills to the back of the pack right. He's the first player at ground level to take possession. Got a handball option in Jay Watson. He uses that player, and his kick in the end finds his target in uh, Kramer. Plays on immediately in, and wheels the ball inboard back to Hagen Wright. Wright now looks to settle and kick the ball longer towards Watson, but it's been intercepted on this occasion by Wanganeen, who's had some early touches. Wanganeen off one step, doesn't get the purchase on the ball he was ideally seeking. It's picked up by Draper for uh, Team Hearn. He's kicked long up the line, is intercepted. By Fairbrother, chips in board. Hamble now releases the run of Dumasny. Zach Dumasny kicks inside, 50 marking contest, ball spoiled, and then given up by hand to the last goal kicker. It's a good shot on goal again from Manny Liddy. A good piece of work there from Riley Holder to get it up to him by hand, but the kick from Laddie is uh, just to the near side and through for a minor score. One goal, two, one goal, two eight. Team Grundy to Team Hearn. One straight goal. Kick in board has turned over. It'll be a snap on goal here from, uh, let's see, Emmett. It might be. He's affected the spoil, Tom Emmett, and he's kicked the goal. It has bounced through for a major. So, Tom Emmett, there's some great defensive work on the uh, pressure on uh, Team Hearn trying to exit the ball from uh, the, four, the, uh, the kick in. And Emmett's been able to kick a goal. Two goals, two. 
Team Grundy moves on to and Hearn one straight goal. Eight points the difference, uh, Danny, opportunistic goal there from uh, Tom Emmett. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Team Grundy seems to have settled a bit more. They, they took a couple of minutes um, to, I guess, get started, but uh, they're playing some really good footy there and take, making the most of their opportunities. Team Grundy by eight points after it was the first goal of the game from Team Hearn there from Brodie Lake. With, it was a wonderful kick from that forward pocket. The northwestern forward pocket is from the start. Is a chance for Team Hearn. The kick there from Hamilton after he received it from right. Now a chance again as Draper on that outer wing. Drives inside 50, but Team Grundy chop it off quite easily. Poulter getting involved here after receiving it from Beacon. Beacon's going to get involved again here. And nice use of the handball from Team Grundy on that outer wing as spinning around is Spain on the right boot towards half forward. This is good use as Poulter can put the side inside 50, getting up, nearly pulling down the big mark on that occasion was Grubb, the Central District boy, who played in their league side this year. Last game would have been a couple of weeks ago on the reserves prelim. As it is, the ball is in the forward pocket for Team Grundy. Ball up, the result. One down, trying to charge his way through, get the handball out, was the goal scorer there in the lake. Quick kick towards the goals, bouncing football, and right on the line, Seeing it over his grieve for a rushed behind. So 2-3-15, that's Team Grundy, Team Hearn, one straight, 6-11 gone, first term. Edwards with the kicking in duty on this occasion goes short to his Tiger teammate there in Hagen Wright. Takes the mark and a head towards the outer side of the ground. And getting a spoil on the ball there was White Ryan and tried to claim the mark, but the umpire said it's over the boundary line before he was able to do so. So he'll be thrown in about 60 metres around from the Team Grundy goal, who certainly started this game off um, with a bit, bit more run so far and possession than uh, Team Hearn. But Hearn has possession now as it comes uh, from uh, Hearing back towards Grieve, but his kick uh, is taken by Burgoyne. The ball coming back inside 50, coming across with a fly to the ball. Good mark from Riley Holder on that occasion. The uh, best and fairest winner for the Sacred Heart College first 18 this year, Riley Holder, just coming across and taking a really good mark. And he'll line up from about 45 metres out. Now, it's a tough kick, as we know, into that breeze, John, but Holder's got, got the journey in him. He's got a long enough kick to be able to kick this. It'll be a test of accuracy. Riley Holder, as he comes in, drop punt is online. It's a good-looking kick. It's a really good finish, classy finish from Riley Holder. Good mark, strong mark, strong kick, and Team Grundy have their third. They're 3 3 21. Team Hearn, one straight goal, six points. And Danny, you saw a bit of Riley Holder play during the season in the college competition. Yeah, I did. That that mark certainly is something that he did very often during the college season this year, and it's uh, one of his strengths, I guess. And obviously, he's proven um, his accuracy again tonight as well. Um, certainly one that AFL clubs will be looking at. Goal to Holder, sees Grundy, Team Grundy skip away to a 15-point lead. 13 and a half gone first term. It's in the ruck, winning it down there, Wyatt Ryan. Then applying a very nice tackle, but the ball came out in the end. Quick handball there from Lake. Chance now, if it gets over to, to Chamberlain to put Team Hearn inside 50. Ricocheted back here in the direction of McCreary, the South Adelaide boy. Nice little dummy there after he received the handball from Hearing. Long kick just away to the left. First behind for Team Hearn. They go to 1 1 7, trailing by 14. 14 gone first term. Ball to the outer side immediately. And going strongly at that one was Ryan. Get, gets the ball off now uh, as the kick comes in board to a Liddy. Goal kicker already in this game. He's had a couple of shots on goal. Liddy for one goal, one. Chips it out wide. And they will retain possession. Right up against the boundary line, the outer side there is Horsnell, his second possession in this uh, chain of play. Cooper Horsnell kicks it long up the line, spoiled behind from Holder, gets the ball to the front of the pack where there will be stacks on the mill there, a tackle laid by Kramer. So we'll see a ball up slightly forward to centre, left half forward for Team uh, Grundy. Ball is taken out of that stoppage by Greaves, immediately tackled, and the ball will spill out now for Grubb. 
He'll get a left foot kick towards the top of the 50 metre arc there. Ball spills to the front of that uh, contest. A chain of handballs there from a trio of defenders ends up with Robbins. And the, uh, the kick now drifts forward to Hearing. He picks it up cleanly and goes by hand to Hamilton. His kick towards the top of the 50 metre arc. Here goes Newchurch. Clever taps the ball to his own advantage ahead of one. Lays a tackle on Beacon. Ball spills out. Beacon still stays over the footy. And uh, Newchurch is still there to apply some pressure. Now it's McCreary who takes possession of the ball. Snap inside. 50 comes from Draper. But the ball will drift across the boundary line. And last possession free kick. We'll see a possession go to Team Grundy. They'll look to bring the ball out of their defensive 50-metre arc. They lead by 14 points. 16-minute mark of this first term. They go back out towards that outer side. Well, getting up high, avoiding everyone in the end. Chance now the little give there from Lodato. But again, Team Grundy swooping on anything loose. Kick there from Clifton. And they're running in numbers as they come towards Harford. Great grab taken there by Will Spain. He, he wants to get on with things. He does. Inside 50, but chopping it off was Kramer with a nice mark. He spots up and finds his teammate Chamberlain. And now Kramer off defence. 50 kicks towards this club room wing. Big clash of bodies. Pulling down the mark. Claiming the mark there was Parrish. Got the handball out. Under pressure, though, as... Poulter shoveled it out in the direction there of his teammate and they go towards the forward 50 arc. Nice little give on that occasion from Nelligan. Running mm. in towards the open goal but pushing it wide was Wanganeen and out of play it goes. Hitting the behind post. That so will be a free kick to Robbins there but it will be taken here by Lodato of Team Hearn and uh, yeah, Team Grundy look a lot better for mine, Danny, when they're, when they're going forward. Yeah, they certainly do. As I said earlier, I think they're just taking their opportunities more and uh, they're using the ball just that little bit better, look a little bit cleaner than Team Hearn at the moment. Created a turnover here just to the top of the 50 handball now to Horsnell. He kicks to the top of the square. Holder well advantaged by that kick, as was uh, Tom Emmett, and it's Riley Holder going back with the flight of the ball on that occasion to take the uh, the mark top of the goal square so he's only uh, well, released from about 15 metres out going back a fair way uh, in his run up there he's almost back to the 50 metre arc as he takes his shot on goal but we saw his earlier shot which was a beautiful shot from 45 metres out so you'd be backing yep. Riley Holder in to kick this one on the basis of that one comes in releases now goal umpire doesn't move so good start for Riley Holder becomes the first multiple goal kicker in the uh, All-Stars game, and he's he's got his team's fourth. They're 4 3 27, Team Hearn one one seven. So, John, what can you tell us about Riley Holder? Obviously, you coached him at Sacred Heart this year during the college season, and yeah. I saw a lot of him, and he looked really good. Really interesting prospect, Danny. You see him playing at centre-half forward today. He's played a bit of footy, uh, school footy as a, uh, as a mobile forward. He's also spent some time in the ruck this year at different times, and he's also played in the last year or so as a big-bodied midfielder. So AFL uh, scouts looking at him, these uh, know that there's some various options um, that he could play in, in, at either end of the ground quite, uh, quite capably, is Riley Holder. As Potter won it down, Edwards with the kick towards 50. Poulter wrapped up in the tackle. And the umpire will ball this one up. About 40 metres out from the Team Hearn goal. They got the first goal there through Lake. It seems a long time ago. It was pulled a dishes off the handball. Chance now for Team Grundy to come towards that outer wing. Team Hearn, though, desperate in defence. Handball came up there to Powell. Slung around, still going. Got it out looking for a teammate with good pressure from the boys in red. As off half back with the uh, quick kick, Burgoyne. Only momentarily, though, was getting in the way. Edwards brings it in and finds a teammate there in Parrish. Drives towards 50, knocked down. Good spoil at the last minute there for Team Grundy. And that probably saved the day. And uh, we'll see the ball up occur. That was by Beacon. Just inside the 50. Slap down. No one could take it cleanly. Again, good tackling. Keeps the ball at that forward 50 arc. We're about to hit the 20-minute 
mark of this first term. 4-3, playing 1-1. One, one. As Bergwijn with that kick back down the wing. Two on one. And at the back, came claiming the mark is Lake. Wants to get on with things. It's a nice pass. And he finds his teammate there in Murphy. So Ty Murphy straightens things up. Back down the line. Inside 50 at the back. Couldn't quite handle it. Coming through, Beacon was tackled. Handball knocked down. Beacon again, cool in defence. And a chance for Tim Grundy to clear out towards half back where the mark is taken by Spain. Gets it on by hand immediately to Poulter. Poulter wheels out wide, maintained possession. Does uh, Team Grundy on the outer side of the ground now? Spoiled by Parrish was effective in that marking contest. Came towards Hamilton. His handball was inter interrupted by. A uh, tackle laid on him. The ball spills over now to Nelligan. He kicks long up the line. And an opportunity now for Team Grundy to go inside 50 through Horsnell. His kick finds uh, Big Ryan. He wheels around, kicks it to the top of the square. Opportunity now for Emmett. He's already kicked one. He tries to step around a couple to get a shot on goal, but he can't get the shot on goal. Great defensive work there for, on that occasion from um, Team Hearn and uh, Duke. Uh, does enough combining there with uh, Lake to make sure that uh, Emmett wasn't able to get that shot on goal. And the resultant stoppage sees a free kick now going the way of Finn Hurd for Team Hearn. Chip short towards Lake. Umpire says he didn't actually take the mark completely, even though the whistle had blown. Calls play on and his handball over to Lordardo. Sees him take the ball over the boundary line for a throw in 25 metres around. From the team Grundy goal, they're 4 3 27. Team Hearn 117. 22 minutes gone in this fir uh, first quarter as the ball comes out by hand towards Parrish. Stands under and takes the heat and wears the tackle and will get a repeat stoppage. 35 metres out from the team Grundy goal. Another one for team Grundy just before the break would make things uh, very interesting. There's going to be another stoppage occur. 22 gone in this first term. Camped inside the 50 at the southern end. Slapped back there by Wyatt Ryan, who won the Central District Under-18s best and fairest earlier in the week as Lodato was infringed on that occasion, and he's going to get the free. Chance to clear the zone. Out here towards the members. We got a wonderful mark. Two on one. Pulling that one in was Parrish. Got things moving with the handball. The quick kick towards half forward. Knocked down. And again, here you go, Team Grundy working it out nicely with some handballs. Setting a task there for O'Loughlin. Couldn't quite get onto it, but now they do so through Nelligan. It's Team Grundy making a final surge. Two minutes to go. The kick inside, 50 at six Ooh. for Emmett. He's met very strongly. Keeps pushing it, though. Knocked it out only as far as Ladauto. Got it up there to Robbins, and he brings it out wide. And the mark's taken here by Parrish who can clear the zone up towards halfback, just over the outstretched fingers of his teammate. Polter received the handball, went short. Emmett swings around inside 50. Knocked down again, some desperate defending there from Parrish. Hurried kick, sits up for Hearing, who dishes out the handball. Or Potter it was, pardon me. Mark taken in the middle of the ground there by Murphy. Maybe a chance now for the boys in yellow as late streaming away. Just over a minute remaining, his kick inside 50. Stacks on the mill in that forward pocket. And the ball up will result. So just over a minute to play. 20 points, Team Grundy lead by ball deep in the forward 50 arc for Team Hearn. Hearing and Smith, give that one to Smith, taps it towards the uh, sanctity of the boundary line, but it doesn't quite get over. And Wayne uh, Burgoyne able to get a handball out and clear... The area now for, for Team Grundy ball uh, doesn't bounce kindly there for uh, Clifton. Able to apply a good strong tackle though as the handball now comes out towards Grubb and Grundy Team Grundy will go forward, uh, but turnover across half back. Good strong mark taken there uh, as the handball goes off to Robbins. He plays on immediately, gets the kick towards Hamilton. He's got another runner. Robbins might get it back by hand here from Kramer. No, decides to look a bit longer than that. Looks for Newchurch. Can't take the mark, but does enough defensively to take the ball over the boundary line. You can see there the scoreboard in the background, 24, almost 25 minutes gone in this opening term. It is a 25-minute quarter. It's a 20-point lead 
to Team Hearn. So a val if they could pinch a goal here, would be most valuable for them going in to quarter time as Beacon was clean at ground level to get the handball out and Team Grundy are able to clear the ball as the siren will be imminent. And there it goes. It sounds for quarter time, just as Lock and Grubb had taken the mark and was about to send Team Grundy forward of centre. The siren has gone and at quarter time, it is Team Grundy, four goals, three, 27, leading Team Hearn, one goal, one, seven. The goal kickers in that quarter for Team Grundy, singles to Liddy and Emmett and two to Riley Holder, the only multiple goal kicker on the ground thus far. Whilst for Team Hearn, it was Brody Lake kicking the opening goal of the game before Team Grundy, Danny, were able to get their own way dominating the rest of the quarter and kicking the next four goals in this contest. Yes, yeah, certainly. I feel like uh, Team Hearn did some really good things in defence. Their defence held up quite well, obviously. Uh, Team Grundy had a, a fair few opportunities late there. Um, but I just felt moving the ball forward um, out of defence and across half back, um, I think Team Hearn sort of lacked some composure a little bit and, and I guess um, some poise, and, and that's where Team Grundy really took control. And, John, the, valuable, the value sorry, of... Uh, key forward targets as well. Riley Holder stood up strongly on a couple of occasions. He was very good, Holder. Pulled them in and kicked the goals, doing what the key forwards need to do. Also a nice goal to uh, to Brody Lake to start the game. From there it was mainly Team Grundy, but some nice performances by the key forwards. Some nice individual efforts. I watched a pretty clear night. It's, it's a good night for footy. Uh, could be a bit, bit brighter, but otherwise uh, good conditions. So a quarter time probably gives us an opportunity just to talk about some players not playing in this, uh, in this contest tonight, Danny. So a couple of the obvious ones to start with, Riley Philthorpe and Lachlan Jones, uh, Lockie Jones. So, so we expect both of those guys to go up pretty high in the draft. Lockie Jones obviously tied to Port as, a, uh, as an academy prospect and Riley Philthorpe, whilst not tied to any club, the, the Crows, of course, do have the number one pick in the draft, and uh, Riley Fieldthorpe would be um, um, uh, a potential selection at that, at that spot as well. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, Riley would be would suit the Crows quite well. Obviously, he's from SA, so reduces any go home factor that they've um, Adelaide sort of have had to deal with in the past. And um, yeah, there's huge wraps on him, and it's a little bit disappointing not to see him out here tonight. Obviously, tonight's the last time these guys will be able to perform before the draft. Um, but in saying that, I, I have no doubt that he'll be picked up, if not by Adelaide, at least, um, you know, a, a club. And a couple of other uh, intriguing options as well. Uh, Tar Schofield not playing tonight. Uh, eligible to be picked up by uh, Port as a father or son. Played a good game as we saw out here in the All Schools uh, Knockout Cup Grand Final as well. So he's another player not playing tonight. As similarly, James Borlace uh, unavailable tonight due to injury. Uh, but as a potential uh, Crows um, next generation uh, selection as well. Yeah, definitely. Those names are the obvious big names, but but there's a, a whole list with uh, Kane Baldwin out, Luke Pedler, who's obviously was uh, PAC's captain this year, and uh, also Phoenix Spicer, who uh, unfortunately broke his arm for the second year in a row. And he was brilliant for Henley um, in the All Schools Cup semi final against Sacred Heart, and obviously didn't play in the grand final against PAC. And some real talent. Uh that's eligible for next year's draft. John, you would have seen a little bit of Jason Horn uh, this season playing for South Adelaide at, at, uh, at league level, particularly through the Sandful finals. Of course, not eligible to next year's draft and not playing tonight following the Sandful series, but he's an exciting young talent as well. He certainly is. Boy from Cardine College uh, has some general soreness and some load management. That's why he's not playing today, but or tonight, should I say. But gee, he's a very good player, Horn. Very self-assured wonderful skills, just knows where to go, knows exactly what he's doing, but at the moment he gets it, and uh, look, he's going to be a guy who's going to be well up on the scouts list in the next year or two in terms of the AFL draft, because that boy can play. I saw him make his debut earlier in the year against Nord at the parade, and uh, he just took to uh, sand for footy from the get-go. A couple of other South have got some real uh, options coming through there. You, Danny mentioned Phoenix Spicer, who's, uh, who's an excitement machine. We've seen some of the footy He's played this season. Uh, there's also Braden Cook, his under-18s South Adelaide teammate, who's uh, not playing tonight with a shoulder injury and has had an exceptional year in the under-18 competition as well. Yeah, they've got some talent, the Panthers. I mean, they had a very good year 
making the uh, the top three in the end, knocked out in the prelim by the eventual Premier, the Eagles. And uh, they've got some... What, what's pleasing is a lot of those guys in the league side are local products, and it's great to see those local products continuing to come up through the juniors and perform. We mentioned Horn, we mentioned Cook and, uh, and young Phoenix Spicer there. It's, it's really good to see after what's it been, 25 years down there at Norlunga, that it really seems to be now that they're they're really embracing or, or being embraced by the community yeah. and good to see guys from the great Southern League, the Southern League and so forth, getting their opportunities and playing league footy with the Panthers. And, and Danny, some some uh, 2021 draft prospects not playing tonight as well. Lewis Rayson, you will have seen some of it, Sacred Heart, Isaiah Dudley, who's a real talent out at, uh, at, at PAC and also Morgan Ferris at St Peter's. Uh, all not playing tonight with some injury, but they're uh, very good footballers to watch out for next year as well. Yes, yeah, certainly. They've still got another year to, to prove themselves there. And um, as you mentioned, Isaiah Dudley was one to watch even last year. Unfortunately, didn't get to play any college footy this year. Had been out all season with a knee. I know PAC were hoping to get him back for the All Schools Grand Final, but unfortunately uh, wasn't fit enough. Um, but yeah, he's certainly one to watch. And Morgan Ferris as well with uh, St. Peter's really impressed this year. So there's some of the players not playing tonight as we uh, get stuck into the second quarter now. Team Grundy leading by 20 points. Uh, John Nankerville, your caller. Smith in the ruck there for Team Grundy up against Potter. Ball in dispute at ground level. Team Grundy starting strongly again. Handball dished out towards Duke who goes inside 50. Knocked down. Coming through Kramer for Team Hearn. He had a pretty decent first term but he's wrapped up on this occasion. And there will be a ball up. Just repeating, if you are just joining us, it was an eight-point win in the Futures game. 9-6-60 to 7-10-52 to Team Smith over Team Ebert. As working hard there was the player in Newchurch. Couldn't quite gain possession. And in the end, Team Grundy go inside 50. Coming through, charging through there, Wyatt Ryan. Not able to take possession of the ball. Ladado got the handball out. Some run here now from Chamberlain. Just chips the kick towards the outer wing. Good mark taken here by Durden. Want to get on with things quickly. And almost went without the ball. Horsnell got a handball out. That's a chance for Team Grundy to go back towards 50. Nice kick. And a nice mark taken here by Grubb. He wastes no time. Here's the voice. Here's the call. And goes over the top. And Team Grundy just... 77 seconds into this second term, have a chance to have a shot on goal there through Doomsday, who has certainly played some very good footy this year, Danny, for South Adelaide. Yeah, he has. He's played some really good footy for South and um, certainly a talent to look out for and I'm sure, hopefully for him, will get picked up. So Doomsday should kick it from here. This is really his sort of bread and butter. He starts it right, he brings it back beautifully and nails his first... The fifth for Team Grundy. Great skill there from the South Adelaide boy, Zach Doomsday. And we're two minutes into the second quarter, and Team Grundy get the first goal. And they're out to a 26-point lead. Danny, great start for the boys in red. Yeah, once again, they just look a lot cleaner moving the ball forward and um, just have that little bit more composure, I guess, and certainly paying off. And in front of goal as well, they're um, making the most of those opportunities. Interesting to see uh, Doomsday playing on the wing here tonight, just coming into your screen now for those watching on the advertiser.com.au website. He's, uh, he's played a lot of his footy across half forward or half back um, over the last year or two. Um, so adding another string to his bow there as a goal-kicking wingman in the early stages of this second quarter as uh, Poulter wins the uh, clearance for Team Grundy, sends it towards left half forward. It'll be taken there by Edwards, stands and delivers a kick towards right half forward. Beacon stood stronger in the contest, one possession of the ball. Hamble comes up now towards O'Loughlin. He kicks the ball in board. Smith combines by hand with Clifton. He steps around a couple and kicks to Big Ryan, who uses his body to knock Robbins out of the marking contest and feed the ball up by hand towards Poulter. And he lowers his eyes really intelligently find a marking target inside 50 in Lachlan Grubb and he'll line up from goal 40 metres out on about that 45 to 50 degree angle uh, intelligent play there from, from Poulter. We'll often see that kick blasted long or deep to the top of the goal square but he was able to lower his eyes, see the presenting option there in Grubb 
and uh, he's able to uh, take the chess mark and now have this shot on goal. Grub from about the same spot where Zach Dumasny just kicked a goal moments ago. That one won't be a goal. It's a bit too far out right. Starts to work its way back, but only enough for a minor score there to young Lachlan Grubb from the Central District Football Club. 5-4-34, Team Grundy, Team Hearn, one one seven. Once again, they're getting up there and knocking it out of play and keeping it in Team Grundy's area. And that was good work from the big ruckman, Smith. 204 centimetres. It's around the 6-8 mark as he goes up against Potter in the ruck. Potter in front position might have just got a touch on it. Comes out here to Poulter. And now Team Grundy can go back inside 50. Bouncing ball at the back. Chance to rebound and come out towards half back for Team Hearn, but only momentarily. That's getting in the way there. Nelligan chips it short to Poulter. Poulter again pops it up over everyone's head at the back. Mark nearly taken there, but not quite completed by Emmett. But the handball out. High kick back towards top of the goals. Bouncing football. Wanganeen comes charging at it, but in the end runs out of room. In that left forward pocket, northern end of the ground. So 27 points the margin in favour of Team Grundy after they led by 20 points at quarter time. White Ryan out of the air, pulls it back to the top of the goal square, knocked down in the direction there of Holder. He couldn't quite take it cleanly. Free kick will go the way of Team Hearn. And they're a chance to come out of defence now through Durden. Well done by Porter as the kick come out, came out towards a marking contest here. Caught behind, effect of the spoil across the boundary line for a throw in. Team Grundy tonight being coached by State Under 18 coach Tony Bamford and also Ben Nelson helping with uh, Chris Smelt, David McKay and of course uh, Brody Smith involved as well. Uh, whilst the Team Hearn coached by uh, Benny Kane, helping Tony Bamford and being assisted by Paul Thomas, Kyle Hardikin and, and Jack Hanneth. So some good AFL names known there, helping out the state under-18 group in these games. As The ball will go forward now fought by uh, Murley for uh, Team Grundy. Chain of handballs ends up with McNamara. Snap on goal with his right boot. Won't come back enough. Goes through for a minor score there to Elliot McNamara. And Team Grundy move on to 5-5-35. Team Hearn 1-1-7 as Robbins brings the ball in to the outer side of the ground, finds a target, but the next kick hasn't done so. Holder first there, takes possession of the ball, steps around one, gets a handball off now towards Murley. He'll kick this team inside 50. The kick goes to the back of the marking contest and out of bounds. It had been touched in the uh, marking contest by the spoil there by Sam Duke. It'll be thrown in 35 metres around from the Team Grundy goal. So, John, Team Hearn, what do they need to do to get themselves back into the, this contest? The, uh, at the moment, they're just going to need some options to channel the ball through the middle of the ground. As we see Hearing take possession of the ball, let's see if they can find an outlet here. At the moment, they haven't been able to get the ball past the middle of the ground here. So the Team Grundy dominating at the moment, dominating possession as the ball chips out towards Beacon. He uh, takes the mark, waits for something to present up forward, looks for a pass there towards left half forward, intercepted well though by Duke on this occasion. So just to that point down here, uh, the uh, yellow team Hearn are going to have to find some options through the middle of the ground, get some harder work from their midfield outside of defence of 50 to try and channel some ball forward. Let's see if they can do that now as the ball comes by hand from Hamilton towards Chamberlain. He chips to the outer side of the ground. Xavier Robbins providing some run and rebound from the back half. Takes the ball 52 metres out, lowers his eyes, and that's a good pass into the uh, path there of Brody Lake, the team's only goal kicker, and he's able to take the mark 40 metres out on a, uh, on a, reasonably, sl on a reasonably difficult angle. But that's a bit uh, of what we'll be looking for, Danny, from Team Hearn. A bit of run and creativity through the middle of the ground and be able to link up through position. And they are able to generate that uh, on that occasion, the run from behind from Robbins and able to free kick to the top of the 50 and therefore an inside 50 entry and the ball ends up with Lake and his shot on goal just misses to his near side and through for a minor score. So one goal, 2-8 to Team Hearn 
Team Grundy 5-5, 35, eight and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. Team Grundy take possession at defence of 50 through Liddy. Kicked the goal early on, which is off to Nelligan, whose handball out wide finds Carey, who drives down that outer wing. Off hands, well read by Team Grundy. They run towards Team the 50 metre arc. It's a nice kick, but just away to the right in the end and through for a behind. So Team Grundy continuing to pepper the goals, not getting a whole lot of reward as Kramer brings Team Hearn out towards this grandstand wing. Durden, so he was Central Districts this year. Had an injury interrupted season. He goes towards half forward, two on two contest. Pulling down a nice mark though on that occasion it was Coates. Not a great kick though over the head of the intended target, Chamberlain. Opens the door again here for Team Grundy. Handball out wide to the big fella in Smith, whose kick goes searching for his fellow Ruckman Ryan. Bootlace level, he couldn't pick it up. Players from both teams pile in. As we approach the 10 minute mark of the second quarter, it's a 28 point lead to Team Grundy. The ball inside their 50. Hurried kick back towards the top of the goals. Able to take it cleanly, hold up. Players throwing themselves in hard at the footy and there'll be a ball up about 30 out from the Team Grundy goal they lead by 28 points so ball up Hearing and Ryan Ryan taps it back to accommodate Nelligan takes possession of the ball and kick to the top of the square now opportunity going back with the flight to take the mark it might be Luke Young it is Luke Young he's taken the mark and he's going to get a 25 metre penalty here uh, to bring him right around the in front, directly in front of the goals, he would have been having to kick a tight check side kick from near the point post, and now he just steps up, no one on the mark, and able to put through the simplest of goals. Luke Young kicks his first, and Team Grundy get their sixth. They're 6 5 41, Team Hearn 1 2 8. I was saying it earlier to John Daddy that in that some of the difference in these games, uh, representative type game as opposed to players playing for their club or their school, not always the same level of celebration after goals of have kicked because players are uh, not as well known to each other. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's what I really enjoyed watching the, the college games this year was I just thought the level of excitement and the intent and the celebrations after each goal was, was really good to see. And it's, um, I guess, that camaraderie as well. I mean, um, it's, it's more than a game, I guess, footy. And, and it's a good way for um, kids to hang out with their mates too. And um, I guess that's what you miss here sometimes. But nonetheless, these guys are really talented and, and deserve a, a shot here. So, restart in the middle. It's going to be Ryan versus Hearing. Hearing Potential one it down. Tons of talk about. Let's get right into they it. They lead by 34 points as a chance for Wright to put a rare 4A forward for the team. It's chopped off almost immediately. And a chance now coming towards looking for Carey. Outmark on that occasion. And now Team Grundy with a kick looking over the head there for Wanganeen. Grub there as well, and they both see it over for a throw-in. But every time we see Team Hearn move forward, they just get chopped off in that action. As Wright wrestling in the ruck, hearing, got it out there to Powell. And now again, Team Hearn chopped off as he sees O'Loughlin on this occasion. Does nicely. And here's a chance for Nelligan. To put Team Grundy back inside 50 and pulling down a very nice mark as he came charging out on the lead was Emmett. He kicked the goal in the first quarter. I think he kicked the first goal of the game for Team Grundy. He can go back and, if he's accurate, put them in front by 40 points at the middle stages of this second quarter. So the kick there from Tom Emmett is a very, very nice kick. He gets his second. He joins Holder as the only multiple goal scorer for Team Grundy. The two multiple goal scorers are two key forwards. Emmett a goal on the first and the second. 40 points, the lead in favour of Team Grundy. And, uh, Daddy, this is starting to get a bit worrying for the Team Hearn coaching staff. Yeah, it's certainly going to be tough for them to come back um, 40, 40 points down. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big ask. And, 
A bit concerning, but, um, you know, nonetheless, as I said before, I think it's really good that they're all getting this shot and, and a chance to, to play because I guess you've got to realise as well that these guys don't play together all the time either. Um, so it, it's hard to get that, um, I guess, consistency as well in their games when they don't play together all the time. Poulter wins another set, uh, clearance. This time goes by hand, looking for Dumasny. Runs on the ball, takes it cleanly and gets it up by hand towards Young, kick inside 50, and they're going to have another shot on goal. Nelligan has taken the mark. He'll line up 40 metres out, 45-degree angle, uh, and a uh, very, very uh, one-sided contest at the moment. 12 scoring shots to three, 39 points to the margin. Tony Bamford might might be tempted to make some changes at half-time, swap some people from <laughs> team swap, to team to try and get, some a, <laughs> get a bit more competitive. As Nelligan comes in, it's just going to fade from right to left and go through for a minor score. Misses to the near side, Nelligan. So uh, 7 6 48 to plays 1 2 8 now as the kick in comes in immediately. It's missed its target on that occasion and goes out of bounds without being touched. So Nelligan to receive possession again. Too far out to score on this occasion. Chips in short, looking for the long lead there of McNamara. He's taken the mark. He's kicked a couple of behinds, kicked that long running behind just before and one in the first quarter. So two points at the moment to Elliot McNamara. He'll be looking to add a goal to that tally with this shot from about 45 metres out on that uh, customary sort of 45-degree angle. So good view at it right there in your lounge rooms or on your computer screens. We're sitting right behind this one. He's got to put it to the right-hand post and allow it to sail in. He's done it perfectly. Has it gone too much? It's almost gone too far. Well, he started that right at the right post and it went all the way across the face of goal and threw for a minor score. It was a pretty reasonable kick from Elliot McNamara, but threw for a behind on this occasion. 41 points to the lead now. 42 points, in fact, to Team Grundy. 15 minutes gone, second quarter. Yeah, it was a great idea from McNamara, but in the end, probably over-executed as chance here for a new church. Tarek new church brings it towards half-back. Wobbly sort of a kick charging forward. Doom men's doomsday. Got it out to Poulter. Poulter hooks his kick back, but it's well a wide and out of play. And Lodardo to bring it back into play for Team Hearn. Still nine minutes to go in the half. With the kick towards half. Oh, big fly from Wanganeen. Couldn't bring it down. Close on the line there. Poulter jostled over, but Wanganeen perhaps, Danny, just flew a tad too early. Yeah, just a little bit too early. That would have been an amazing mark if he could have... Uh could have brought it down, but yeah, unfortunately, just that little bit too early. Exciting product, Messiah Wanganeen plays for Glenelg under 18s, coming across from the Marion Football Club this season. Played some terrific footy at under 18 level. He might get possession here now, touch the ball to his advantage, tries to pick it up on the second uh, attempt, uh, but unable to do so, and lays the tackle to take Corey Durden across the boundary line. 16 and a half minutes gone, 25 minutes. The quarters we're playing. Caleb Poulter there in your picture has been quite prominent with his possession rate so far in this contest. Ball goes to the back of the stoppage on that occasion. Handball comes out in the end towards Liddy. He was too slow getting rid of the ball. Ran down on that occasion by his South Adelaide teammate and Bo McCreary and he wins the resultant free kick across half back for Team Hearn. Let's see if they can get something going here as they come grandstand side. Mark will be taken. Good contested mark by Hurd for uh, uh, for Team Hearn on this occasion. Uh, they kicks up the line. The St. Peter's product it goes towards uh, the top of the 50-metre arc where Durden is able to uh, soccer the ball inside 50. St. Peter's, in fact, PAC product. He is Finn Hurd and will have a stoppage about 50 metres out from their goal. They've only had a couple of forward 54 as this quarter. Let's see if they can make something of this one. Kick to the top of the square, but it's all Team Grundy there. And the defensive mark was taken there by Will Spain. So Spain, left back pocket. Just chips over the top to Poulter. Last line of defence. Going to go long back out towards half back. And he decides to go the shortest top. It might come off here as Edwards was up to the task. But again, Team Yellow pressured all the way by Team Grundy. And over the line and out of play it goes. And there'll be a throw in. Still right forward pocket. 
for Team Hearns, searching for that second goal. They have got the first goal of the contest, but have seen six goals piled on, seven goals piled on since then. Quick kick. Little handball back in by Chamberlain. Run down on that occasion there was Powell. Opens the door again for Poulter. Wrapped up, taken over the line. And the boundary throw into result. There's in the ruck. But he goes over everyone's head on that occasion. Potter was in front position. Comes out now in the elegant to Burgoyne. High kick back towards this club room wing. Almost the good, it is going to be paid in the end, the good defensive mark. Snared there by Grieve. Wants to get on with things and does. And now long straight kick inside 50. Again though, caught behind the key forwards on that occasion. As McCreary tackled, dispossessed. And again an opportunity to clear down the line. White Ryan got a handball out, couldn't find a target. And the tackle with the footy is Lake, and the ball up will result half forward for Team Hearn. 20 minutes gone, second quarter, 42 points to lead for Team Grundy. Team Hearn just struggling to get any real form of uh, system or um, forward movement going at the moment as, Ch as Newchurch is well tackled. Turnover comes towards uh, Nelligan, feeds out to Wanganeen, chip in board, comes by hand now towards Liddy. He'll send the ball to the top of the 50-metre arc. McNamara going back, trying to knock the ball to his own advantage, but in doing so, he had hold of Jared Parrish, and Parrish wins the free kick inside defensive 50. Chip short towards Kramer. He does likewise in board to maintain uh, possession and give it off on this occasion to Chamberlain. Chips in board to McCreary. He gets the uh, jet burners on now to kick the ball long inside. Forward 50 marking contest. Lake able to take possession at ground level, immediately tackled the handball from Beacon on that occasion. Couldn't quite get it to Ned Carey, and the ball went over the boundary line. Last position, free kick. We'll see uh, the big full forward in uh, Lake uh, have the free kick for Team Hearn. So it's a pretty difficult kick with uh, tonight's breeze. The breeze uh, blowing across the face of goal there for him. It's going to be tough here for Brody Lake to get have enough room to squeeze this ball between the posts. He's going to have to go the check side kick. It's a pretty good execution of it. It's an outstanding execution of it. Brody Lake kicks his second goal and the only goal kicker uh, for Team Grundy. He's done it in style. Wonderful kick, Danny. And the, the reality is the drop punt couldn't have gone in through that angle with that breeze. The check side was the only option. He's executed that very, very well, almost sort of danger field like the way he kicked those couple of goals in the prelim on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely and he just seems so relaxed doing it as well which is really good to see, I just I guess just having that bit of confidence in your ability as well and um, he's certainly been the standout for Team Hearn tonight really presenting well and, and his accuracy obviously with two straight goals. Goal of the night so far there to young Brody Lake will that spark his team three minutes to go in this second quarter Smith gets up, slaps it down in the, the clearance from Team Hearn towards 50, bouncing football to get away there. Tackled well was Karupas. And there'll be a ball up inside 50. Definitely searching for another goal. Team Hearn slapped away. Chance for Spain at defence. 50 had a bounce, maybe a bit ill-timed. He had time to recover and chip towards the wing where he finds Burgoyne. They work it out nicely with handball. The kick towards half forward, but getting in it and chopping it was right, chopping it off. And getting things moving towards Kramer on the outer wing. Ladato went down on one knee, was tackled. And in fact, the umpires found a free going his way. So Ladato will get up with the footy. It's about half back. Just over two minutes remaining. Goes back there to right. Kick down the line. Knock towards the line. Grubb happy to see it over for the boundary throw-in. Doing the ruck work, it's going to be Potter for Team Hearn. 
against Smith for Team Grundy. Smith works his way to the front, knocks it down, dishes it out to Burgoyne. As free kick there. Obvious one going the way of the boys in red. They drive it towards 50. And a good defensive mark pulled down. And so Team Hearn will take the footy. Dishing it off there on that occasion. And running it towards the outer wing. Off hands, working hard. Clifton, can he cut with the footy? He can. Nelligan wrapped up in the tackle. And the ball up will result. So 35 points, 36 points now. The difference, 24-minute mark of this second quarter. Hearing best on ground for Norwood in the under-18 grand final on the weekend. Can't get that tap down. The ball goes inside 50. It's uh, swooped on by Grubb, but his shot for goal goes across the face of goal and through for a minor score. Two behinds now to Lockie Grubb. Uh, 7 9 51. Team Grundy move on to Team Hearn 2 2 14. Kicking comes to Newchurch. Plays on immediately, uses his speed to break the line. Kicking board though was intercepted well by Karupas. His kick inside 50 finds the long lead of Emmett and he's going to go back and have another shot on goal. His second shot on goal for this quarter, Tom Emmett, after kicking a goal in the first quarter and also a goal in this second quarter. The Sturt product will go back and line up uh, to become the only uh, three goal kicker on, or, or goal kicker, should I say, with uh, three goals in this game. And he's done it quite well. Umpire hasn't moved as the siren goes. Tom Emmett kicks his third. And half time of the uh, AFL SA All Stars game sees Team Grundy on 8 9 57. A leading team, Hearn, who have been a bit disappointing in 2 2 14. 43 points at the half time margin, extending on that 20 point quarter time lead that team, Hearn, uh, team Grundy had established. And the uh, goal kicker, as we said, Tom Emmett kicking three, Riley Holder with two, and singles each to Luke Young uh, and uh, Manny Liddy. Whilst for the uh, team, Hearn, the uh, sole goal kicker is Brody Lake, who has kicked two. Um, but uh, Danny, fairly much uh, one-way traffic in that uh, in that second quarter, with Team Grundy dominating not just on the scoreboard but in general play as well. Yeah, definitely. That last goal from Team Grundy would have uh, definitely hurt Team Hearn. They obviously kicked a cracker um, by late uh, late in that last, in that second term, but then uh, only for a, a Team Grundy to kick another one, which was um, yeah pretty disappointing for Team Hearn. Let's see what they can do at this second half. If uh, What can you take, I guess, out of what Team Hearn have done? Well, we'll come back and have a talk about all of that uh, shortly, Danny, as we'll go through some of the better players and uh, what the coaching, what the teams might look to do in this second half. We'll just take a break as the players head down at half time to be able to take a, a break and some instructions from their coaches. We'll do the same up here in the broadcast position. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast here on the advertiser.com au website it's a 43 point lead to team grundy over team hearn at half time of the all-stars game we'll be back with you in about 10 minutes time to bring you the second half for this second half and Team Grundy have only just appeared in the last minute or so. So uh, perhaps a statement there from the coaching staff of Team Hearn that they've got to get their act together and try and get their way back into this contest. From a scoreboard perspective, obviously they're 43 points behind, but uh, we'll see if they can get an early goal on the board and get some momentum from there. As we're underway in the second half, and yeah, an early goal, the understatement there for Team Hearn. It was one down by Smith in the ruck. And 
ball up will resolve. Secondary ball up. Right, that the free kick going to go the way of Lake for Team Hearn to start things off. So a couple of goals, the only goals for Team Hearn, a couple of beauties. He drives this one long inside 50, big fly. The back of the handball came out. And now there's a chance here at defence 50 for Wanganeen. Brings it back towards the wing position. Hang up and just a little spoil there from Young. Handball came out. Clifton couldn't pick it up. Pulled it. Could he get it back on the 1-2 from Smith? Now gets it off there in the direction of O'Loughlin, whose quick kick found Spain. And a little chip there over the top with some run from Fairbrother. And slowly but surely through Dumsney. They work it round. Fairbrother again towards half forward. Chance now for Team Grundy to go inside. 50 knocked down close to the line. And happy to see it over there. Sam Duke for Team Hearn. Joining us again in the second half. It's a big welcome to Danny Abruccivento from the Advertiser. And Danny, more positive start from Team Hearn. But uh, Team Grundy again inside 50. Yeah, I guess Team Hearn, um, as John mentioned earlier, came out a bit early uh, before the start of this second half to try and, I guess, um, get a bit more pumped up. But, yeah, it's all Team Grundy still. As you can see there, they've just chopped the ball off. That's Dumasny who uh, wills in board intelligently, uh, kicks it short to Murley, and Murley inside 50. The mark will be taken by Grubb, leading out uh, front on there at... Uh, at Murley and the kick uh, found its target and Grubb will line up uh, released from a just inside the 50 metre arc but kicking into a decent decent breeze uh, in this uh, third quarter is his side, Team Grundy looking for the opening score in this third quarter kick will not quite get the journey, punched forward now, opportunity at ground level, we'll see the ball come out to Wanganeen, he feeds by hand and Nelligan his snap for goal goes across the face of goal. Three on one here. The numbers face uh, favour the team in yellow and they rush it through for a rush behind to open scoring in this second half. Edwards now to uh, perform the kick in duties goes short. Handball option now is McCreary. He receives, stands, turns, looks in board. Can't see anything he likes, so kicks it longer up the line. That breeze is definitely picking up and favouring left of screen. The... Uh, Northern end here at Thebit and Oval as the ball gets uh, tapped out towards right. He'll look laterally. There's options running in board. Uh, one of them's uh, McCreary, and the, in the end, the short kick goes towards Hearing. The big ruckman takes the mark just forward of centre, kicks it towards left half forward, and players almost running into colliding into each other, running at each other on that occasion was uh, McCreary and also uh, Karupas. For Team Grundy, and as those players clash, the ball spilled over the boundary line where it will be thrown in. Three and a half minutes gone, 44 points the lead to Team Grundy. So, ball at half forward for Team Hearn. One down by Hearing, but no one really going anywhere from that stoppage. And there'll be a ball up at 50. There's the kick inside the forward 50 arc from Powell. Big fly at the back, reading it nicely for Tim Grundy. Burgoyne, his kick was smothered though. Ricochets to O'Loughlin. Little kick down the line. Grubb can keep things going. Nice kick to Fairbrother. And now McNamara goes short and working it with precision as we saw them do in the first half. Nelligan at half forward drives his team inside 50. Grubb got caught behind his Opposite number 11 there in New Church, who lost it, had it again, but now the numbers win out. McNamara putting his side back into 50, and the mark is taken there by Carey. Big Ned Carey for the Norwood Football Club. Four and a half gone in this third quarter, and he can line up for goal from about 35 out. Yeah, first touch, I think, just about for Carey. I haven't seen much of him tonight. Uh... Uh, plays his footy at Norwood and also uh, Ross Trevor 
college as well. So I had a back injury, Danny, for a fair portion of the year as well. Yeah, I think he missed the first half of the season with that injury and it was good to see him come back um, just before the intercall there against Sacred Heart and, and did okay against Sacred Heart. Long kick from Kerry, going to drift in this breeze, but it might still come off because the mark, was it taken inside? It was. Play on the call and Doomsney comes up with the footy. And he can line up from there, and that's well within his range. He's kicked one already to the other end in a similar sort of a shot. This one probably a little bit closer. So, Zach Doomsday from South Adelaide Football Club. Six league games this year. To line up for the eighth goal. And he hits the post. So... Behind to Team Grundy, they put their lead 59 2 2 14. With that behind, it's now out to 8 12 60. The kick's been intercept marked here by Emmett. That's the uh, second time in this match he's going to have an opportunity to uh, to kick a goal as a result of uh, some of his defensive work on the kick in. Uh, kicked one uh, similar in the uh, first quarter. And obviously he's kicked two others in that second quarter, but he'll go back from 40 metres out, can't get the journey into that breeze. Uh, the Yellow Guernseys have the numbers back there. It's uh, Kurt Coates who wins possession, comes out towards Chamberlain. He chips it out wide to uh, Duke, and they're out of defence of 50 now as the handball links up with Edwards. He kicks uh, out wide, and Robbins is able to take the mark. He's got a couple of runners uses one of them in uh, Draper. His handball loops over the top, might get picked up back here by Robbins. It is on the overlap. He kicks inside 50. A chance at the back now for uh, Team Hearn. The shot on goal will be missed in the end by Liam Hamilton. The ball spilled over the back and had the opportunity to kick a goal, but it went through for only a minor score, unfortunately, to Team Hearn. Uh, so they move on to 2 3 15. Team Grundy and 9 5 59 as the ball's kicked out to the outer side. It's picked up immediately by Draper. He'll launch a shot on goal. It's right to the line, but not quite enough purchase on the ball and the good defensive mark taken by O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin goes searching for Wanganeen. He couldn't quite get there. Out of play it goes. So Newchurch will get the free. And Newchurch has it. Man on the mark right on the arc of 50. Doesn't look overly confident. He hooks it back towards the top of the goal square. A little bit of distance in the end with the breeze through for a behind. So 8 12 60 to 2 3. Well, I should say 8 11 59 to 2 4 16. Behinds when they need goals as the Grundies come out towards half back, knocked away. Handball comes up here towards Hearing. Robbins. Hooks it back inside 50. Knocked down. Players head over the footy. Squirts out the back. No one can take a clean touch. Good tackling there on that occasion from right. They'll be rewarded, Team Hearn, as the kick inside 50. And a good mark's taken there by Hamilton. So Liam Hamilton will line up with O'Loughlin on the mark. Still looking for goal number three, Team Hearn. Only the one goal score for them today, and that is Brody Lake with two great goals in the first half. So Hamilton deliberately towards that northern end, going to fall short and be fisted through for a behind. We've gone nine minutes in this third quarter. Comfortable lead to Team Grundy of 42 points. Beacon with the kicking in duties. He's going to look grandstand side. Uses the free player short in Burgoyne. He chips similarly short and Nelligan takes a diving mark just inside the boundary line. Looks in board. Option gets covered so looks to go long down the line now. Holder get a jump at this one. It's uh, Smith well positioned in front. Got his hands to the ball. Didn't take the mark. Handball comes over the top now. Intercepted there by uh, Team Hearn, by Chamberlain, and they'll go forward now. Nelligan in the marking contest, well spoiled by Murphy. Ball spills out to McCreary, his kick inside 50. 
some body work there from her. Tried to position himself to be able to run onto the loose ball, but he's unable to do so on this occasion. And Beacon takes the uh, saving mark defensively for his side. Chips out wide uh, where Poulter takes the mark. Just outside defensive 50. Got an option short in, uh, uh, let's see, that might be Uding. It is, and he's taken the mark. Only gained some sort of 10 to 15 metres in yardage, but they've maintained possession into this breeze in this quarter. The kick goes in board. It's not a good one. It's marked, uh, intercept by, by Luke Edwards. He's chipped in board and found Heard on this occasion, 70 metres out from goal. Chips towards movement, towards the forward pocket there. It's the big fella in, uh, is it Hunter Price? No, it might be Potter. Sam Potter it is. And he got his hand to the ball to save the free kick going to his opposition, um, but couldn't trap it before the ball goes over the boundary line. So to be thrown in 30 metres around from their goal team, Hearn. 11 minutes gone. They trail by 42 points in this third quarter, but it will be Nelligan clearing the ball for Team Grundy. Wants to get himself in some trouble, but in the end, it comes off. Nice mark taken here by Doomsny. Chips back towards the middle of the ground and finds Grubb. Grubb. Gets the call with the kick partly smothered still. They'll keep it moving. Inside 50, Team Grundy. Crumming front and centre there. Nice little give out by Holder. Tackle. Jarring free the ball there, McNamara. Coming through to get the handball up. On that occasion was Coates. The umpire's whistle is gone. And it will come back a free to Robbins. Deep in defence for the yellow team. He comes out and finds Newchurch, whose kick is chopped off by Burgoyne. Burgoyne goes back with the short kick. He'll come off here to Poulter. Just building something you feel as Poulter's kick finds Doomsday. Doomsday towards half forward. And it's in the position of Nelligan. Nelligan's kick, the umpire goes to ground, but that doesn't matter as it's a mark deep inside 50 there to Holder for the red team and Holder Danny can line up for guy number three for his personal tally he and Emmett sort of uh, duking it out to see who'll get the most goals for team red yeah I've been really impressed by Holder again not surprising by the way he's presenting himself he did that in the college season this year as well but um now he's doing his draft uh, prospects no harm at all Holder's kick looks pretty good off the boot he's nailed it three goals to Riley Holder. Three goals to Tom Emmett. They're leading the way. The two key forwards. Team Grundy skip ahead there. 9, 11, 65, 2, 5, 17. 12 and a half gone third term. And uh, it's sort of now for, I guess, for Team Hearn, Danny. It's just a matter of trying to win the quarter and then again win the next quarter and try and get some respectability back on the board. Yeah, certainly. I think so. I think they just need to start really, um, I guess, putting their body on the line as well and doing their best, as you said, to win the, win the quarter and, um, I guess, give themselves some, some respect back. So Ned Carey got into the ruck contest in the middle uh, for the first time it would appear in this game. Let's see how he goes here, jumping up against Big Potter. It's uh, Potter that wins it down as the Team Hearn win the uh, clearance to go forward. It's trapped there by Lake and he was taken high in the tackle as he fell forward then so he'll be awarded a free kick 60 metres out from goal Brody Lake, he's kicked their only two goals in this contest so far he might be just beyond his range this one it is, as he puts it to the top of the square, Kerry will jump at this one ball gets spills to the back of the pack, Dumsney took it by hand and Nelligan he shared it back with uh, Dumsney, he steps around one, gets a kick away under pressure it gets smothered now by uh, Durden he couldn't get a clear possession away snap from Edwards also gets smothered handball comes out now shot on goal will come from McCreary in the end working its way right to left and through for a minor score first scoreboard impact in the, t- tonight's game to Bo McCreary so they move to 9-11-65 Team Hearn 2 5 17. I think, as I mentioned before, with Team Hearn, it's just really not being able to make the most of those opportunities. You saw there that they, they did have a chance to goal there and, um, you know, do themselves some good, but unfortunately just couldn't make the most of it. Meanwhile, Team Grundy have gone from coast to coast and have the footy inside their forward 50 arc. 14 and a half gone third quarter. And they have the shot on goal over there in that left forward pocket. Luke Young, who kicked a goal in the second term, 
has the footy. And I love the way the team trying to be very confident with their shots on goal. The set shots, they take them up, they go back, they don't waste time. They always feel, they always back themselves in. This one going to go across the face from Young. Umpire's whistle's gone. He's found a free kick here going the way of Team Grundy for a hanging on. And it's going to come the way of Emmett, who can line up for his fourth for the red team. Almost tricky, these ones. About 15, 20 out. It's that slight angle, which can just throw you a bit. And I think it threw Emmett on that occasion. This one across the face, through for a behind. 15 and a half gone, third quarter. Team Grundy leading comfortably. Nearly got another one on the uh, kick yes. then, did Emmett. But Ed was able to take the mark and just settle it down. Kicks it laterally. Duke takes the mark. He's going to look for a short one up the line to Newchurch. Might think about playing on here. No, decides to go back, traditionally kick the ball over the man on the mark. Long kick, Ryan will come in, spoil the marking attempt to carry on that occasion. Ball spills to the back of the marking contest. Creary applying some pressure at ground level, as is Murphy. And ball spills out now, chance for Potter, couldn't take possession. Dumasny was clean with his ball handling, but the kick was uh, into the back of his uh, teammate there in big uh, Ryan on that occasion. And ball trickles over the boundary line where it will be thrown in. Grandstand centre wing, 16 and a half minutes gone, third quarter. It is uh, the Red Grundy team, 9-12-66, versus the Yellow Hearn team, who are on 2 6 18. Ball tapped down from Potter, taken by Edwards. He's also taken in a tackle, tries to spill the ball out to his team's advantage, but in the end it's Nelligan that gets on the ball first, steps through one, can't step through the second and third tackle. Ball gets uh, handled forward now to release Murley into some space. He kicks up the line, looking for a centimetre perfect pass on that occasion to Luke Young. But he ran out of real estate and uh, able to punch the ball over the line is Kramer for a boundary throw in. 55 metres around now from the Team Hearn goal. It'll be Holder in this rucking contest. Works his way to the front. Had an opportunity to pick the ball up on the bounce. In the end laid the tackle with support there from Grubb. But Grubb's secondary tackle effort got into the back on that occasion of Luke Edwards and the young Tiger will receive the free kick accordingly. Edwards goes short and finds Hamilton and now they look to clear to Kramer at half back his kick is a wobbly wide one well past right they may get away with this though the boys in yellow Potter over the top there to Hamilton long kick inside 50 and pulling down a very nice mark about 35 out Straight in front is for Team Yellow, the player in Ty Murphy has this one. So that was a much smoother movement forward. And now Murphy to line up for his first. 18 gone in this third term. Shouldn't miss from here, Murphy, but he drags it to the left. One point, the result. Leave themselves down with their kicking now is Team Hearn. With another behind there to Murphy. O'Loughlin, with the kicking in duties this quarter, uh, goes short to Burgoy, and he does likewise. Hasn't found a marking target on this occasion, though. Chance now for Robbins to get the handball out towards Bailey Chamberlain. Does a, a nice sideways step to maintain position, get himself into some space and chips it short to Duke. Long kick inside 50 now from Grieve and a mark's been taken and I think you'll find it's Liam Hamilton who uh, will have the shot on goal. He's kicked a point in this quarter. Hamilton, he'll line up from, uh, by the time he releases the ball, about right on the 50 metre arc, uh, almost directly in front of goal. So uh, this kick will show you uh, quite clearly how much the breeze is favouring that uh, northern end of the ground as distance shouldn't be a problem. Hamilton skips in a couple of sideways movement, sends it up high enough to get the journey, does it? Not quite, just across the face of goal. It's still alive here. Chance for the team Hearn to still get a snap on goal if they can get into space and it's Draper with possession of the ball but he can't get himself in a position to be able to have a shot on goal. So as the clock ticks over the 20-minute mark, Team Hearn still looking for their first goal in this wind-assisted third quarter. Ball tapped towards their points and trickles through 
for another rush behind. So they move on to two goals, 8-20. Team Grundy, 10-6-66. 46 points in the margin, 20 minutes gone, third term. They're just not able to find a major at the moment. As Fairbrother's got it deep in defence. Goes short. And just happy to work it round. Go along now, Clifton, down that outer wing. And a good, strong grab. Take it up there by Beacon, hand it off to Burgoyne and Doomsday's got it out of wing They've got a lot of play down this out of wing tonight have Team Grundy as again Clifton with it puts them inside 50 big fly from the back and able to pull it down on that occasion was Carey, but he went up very high and the ball up results 21 gone, third quarter a 46-point lead to Team Grundy. Carey in the ruck, thumped it down. Little handball came out, was knocked away. Still the pressure comes. Wanganeen had it, dished it back. High kick off a step to about 30 from goal. Coming out on the lead there, and able to pull it in was Emmett. Handball back. Didn't quite find a target as they desperately push it forward. Umpire has found a free, though. Coming back here to Team Grundy in front of goal and they seem to be winning them in those positions about 25-30 out looks to be Clifton has been busy for them throughout this evening put them in excess of a 50 point lead Clifton keeps it low and hard, but drags it across the face. 47 points they lead by, 22 gone third term. But they're well in control with just over a quarter to play. Cheek to bring the ball back in. McCreary gives him an option short, but he's going to go longer than that. And going back with the fly to the ball, strong marking effort there. For, uh, Parrish not paid. Ball fl flicks out to Poulter now. And... Uh, he gets a handball forward to Nelligan. Nelligan gets one on the run to Grubb, and he intelligently chips the ball short to Emmett. Could have launched a shot on goal, Lockie Grubb, but decide, saw the uh, free player forward to the ball, and Tom Emmett will line up for his fourth goal, Danny. I think that's been the difference between two team, the two teams, obviously. As you mentioned, um, mm. Tim Grundy could have blazed away there, but just lowered the eyes and, and really found the target. So Emmett missed from a, f a similar position earlier in this quarter but he's learned his lesson and gone to school on that kick and he kicks truly Tom Emmett he nudges ahead of Riley Holder now to be the leading goal kicker on the ground with four Holder of course has three and team Grundy have 10 in total they're 10 13 73 team Hearn at 2 8 20 23 minutes gone in this third quarter so Tom Emmett the Sturt Football Club uh, product he's kicked four goals uh, now in this game and to be the leading goal kicker on the ground. So you, you'd have to uh, suggest, Danny, with uh, both Emmett and Holder, seven goals between them, uh, just about being the, the, the difference up forward between these two sides. Yeah, certainly, and it proves when you've got some strong targets up inside 50 that can mark and, and can kick accurately as well. Um, it obviously turns the game. As Team Hearn go towards 50 again, trapping it nicely, Pow, his handball knocked down Burgoyne took it gets it on the boot, his kick smothered there by Hearing, close to the line, in Pow, putting them back inside 50, Doomsday couldn't take it, Hamilton's hurry kick they had a play on the fall there's desperation just sort of creeping into the game for Team Hearn as they try to make their mark on the scoreboard Team Grundy, meanwhile, 53 points in front of had no problems kicking goals this evening as the ball off hands and out of play for what might be one of the final phases of this term. We've gone 24 and a half minutes in this third quarter as the ball to come back into play at the back. Smith hooks it back behind him. A little give there by Liddy towards... Burgoyne, who can come off defence. 50 is their time for Team Grundy to score one more. There might be. Fumble in the middle, not taking it cleanly. 
In the end, the handball came out. Liddy was dragged down. Loose football. Parrish came up with it. He shoveled it back there towards his teammate in Murphy. But there is the siren. So at three-quarter time is the commanding 53-point lead to Team Grundy over Team Hearn. Give you the exact score there. It is 10-13-73 to 2-8-20 in favour of the boys in red. And John Simons, you've got the goal kickers there, mate. I do. So uh, Tom Emmett leading the way uh, with four goals, the leading goal kicker on the ground thus far. Riley Holder uh, in close pursuit of him has kicked three and singles uh, to Luke Young and Manny Liddy makes up the ten goals for Team Grundy, whilst for Team Hearn... It remains just the solitary goal kicker, Bro Brody Lake, who has kicked uh, two goals one of their two goals eight. Uh, so 40, what was a 20-point margin at quarter time in favour of uh, the uh, team Grundy has uh, increased at half time to a 43-point lead, and they've edged that out now to a 53-point three-quarter time lead. Uh, so you'd suggest unassailable given the... Uh, the breeze that they're kicking with in the last quarter, but it's really not just that what they're telling us on the scoreboard, Danny. It's really what we're seeing in terms of how the uh, the red side are running the ball and uh, and using each other forward to centre compared to the the yellow side, which don't appear to uh, uh, be playing with as much system in that regard. Yeah, definitely. Just their movement from defence into attack has really impressed me as well, and the way that they can wait for you know a, a strong target and a lead and. Um, yeah, their kicking inside 50 is obviously really good and it helps when you've got the strong targets of the likes of Emmett and Holder as well. Um, if you were a recruiter, what would you take out of uh, Team Hearn? And um, I guess the score doesn't mean too much, but who sort of impresses? Yeah, if you're looking through it, um, um, you can see that, that when Newchurch gets hold of the footy, he's a... A polished performer, yep. he knows what he's doing, so that'll excite the uh, the Adelaide Crows, given that he's a potential um, uh, selection for them tied to their uh, uh, to their academy. Um, but better better players, um, there's not too many. Um, in, you know, in the yellow, Xavier Robbins had a little bit of the ball through that through that quarter. Tom Powell really uh, had some early touches in the first quarter and then died away a bit. I've probably been most impressed with Brody Lake overall yep. in terms of. Uh, in terms of Team Hearn, I think he's probably been their best player. Kick, obviously, kicked their two goals, but also has had a bit of footy when moving up through the through the middle of the ground as well. Jared Parrish defensively had a pretty good uh, first quarter; hadn't had as much action in the in the prior couple of quarters. Whereas you look through the the red of Team Grundy, and there's there's quite a few names that um, you know that you think have played well. Nelligan has had a fair bit of the ball. Um, Fairbrother had a good quarter that quarter. Wanganeen's been prominent. Cooper Beacon's been very good. Uh, Zach Dummers, and he's just about been best, I think, for the red team. And Riley Holder and Tom Emmett up forward have been very good. And that's uh, without mentioning Poulter and his clearance work, which has been pretty solid throughout the game. So, um, yeah, clearly the uh, the uh, team in the red Guernseys have had the, uh, had the better players on the ground, John. Oh, look, they certainly have. And I think one thing I like about it is I think... Their, their, their confidence going forward, but their key forwards, the way they, they really back themselves in once they take a mark, and they go back and confidently line up their set shots on goal. It sounds basic, but when you see the way that Team Hearn has struggled to do a similar thing, and this has almost been under pressure, I know, but they've been a bit more panicked going inside 50, but that's the, the key thing. The pressure has been really good from Team Grundy tonight on Team Hearn, and it, and it, and it showed through. Uh, so, yeah... You know, the game, it's obvious where it's, this one's heading. It's been obvious since the first quarter, but uh, there, there, there'll be no attempted comebacks as we saw in the, the first game. But I guess now for Team Hearn, they kick six straight behinds. They need to improve on that and really try and win this quarter of football and just be more accurate in front of goal. Another player we haven't spoken about uh, tonight is uh, Kane Baldwin. Is an interesting one to, to discuss. The uh, uh, Westminster captain the Glenelg product that's missed his second consecutive yeah. year with a uh, with a knee injury but he's a, he's an absolute talent and and uh, played some some league trials last year as a as a as a bottom ager so um, it's going to be interesting to see where he fits into the the draft puzzle a bit like Ryan Burton when he had that sort of bad injury um, at the end of his 
school year, um, yeah. um, but still, and, and drop down a bit in the draft. And once they can get over that injury, becomes very, very good players. It's interesting to see how clubs will look at look at Kane Baldwin in that regard. Well, he's obviously got the talent, hasn't he? That's the thing, Danny. There's no doubt about his talent. It's just now, do they do they take the risk on him because of these injuries? Do they see him as unsound? You, you hope that's not the case. But I think the good thing for him is the ability is there. Yeah, certainly. Just wanted to quickly speak about um, Henry Nelligan. He's a St. Peter's uh, product. And uh, last year, he was uh, likened to this year's AFL... Uh, best and fairest winner, Lockie Neal. Um, have, have you guys seen any similarities there between the way Henry, Henry Nelligan plays and, and the way Lockie Neal does? Well, I have in terms of the... Um, he uh, won the medal in the, um, in the college competition last year and the, the game against Sacerdoti, he was very, very good around the footy. So he played a lot like him that day. Um, so he's been quite prolific uh, tonight in the way he's gathered possession of the ball, which is something that Lockie Neal does a lot of um, so we can understand the uh, the similarities in that regard as the ball as the play sorry gets underway in this last quarter Cooper Beacon leading in the chase for the ball can't take possession as uh, in the end the free kick has gone to his teammate here in Will Spain so nothing in board for Spain so he's going to need to look down the line as Nelligan tries to provide a short option goes longer now it just gets over Ryan's head Beacon in front of the pack Terrific crumb and instinctive handball forward to the run there of uh, his teammate in, uh, let's see, it's Murley that gets the kick inside 50 just over the top of Emmett on that occasion. And the ball's taken over the boundary line there by Lee, uh, Leo Coates. And uh, love seeing that sort of stuff from being this player smart, yeah. uh, John, front of the pack, right spot to get the crumb and then just feed off that, that reflex handball. It's good play from Cooper Beacon on that occasion. A minute gone, final term, Coates to bring it back into play. Drives it out towards half back and getting up there, taking the grab was Murley who sends it back inside with a nice little kick. And there's the man we spoke of a short time ago, Nelligan. He is a talent, there's no doubt about it. He's got this one 45 out, slight angle. And again, I see, like I say, he just backs himself in. These, these players, they go back, they're confident of their abilities, got the breeze behind him. Probably test his distance, but he kicks from 50, drags the bit to the left, comes back. Not enough, through for one behind. So a behind to open the quarter. And the margin to 54 points. As Team Hearn brings the footy back into play, and it's marked by Powell. Just maintaining position now in the, uh, the back half. Powell goes laterally. Kick now is uh, taken by Dummers and he steps through a tackle, gets a handball in board, which will be mopped up by his, uh, the opposition now, uh, linking in Ty Murphy with some handball run down the outer side of the ground. Now kick into space opportunity might come here for Team Hearn to get a, launch a shot on goal. They do, and it just misses to the outer side through for a minor score, their opening score in this quarter. They move on to 2 9 21 Team Grundy 10 14 74 53 points the difference as uh, Beacon brings the ball in and a short kick now finds the big man in Ryan. Wyatt Ryan, big lump of a lad, kicks towards Poulter on the wing over his head. Sits nicely for Grubb who goes further afield to the handball, long handball. Poulter did well to gather it in, goes short just past the outstretched arm of Nelligan. Meeting it strongly, though, on that occasion was Emmett. Got it up to Carey. Back to Emmett. Can he kick his fifth? He won't on this occasion as he drags it across the face through for a behind. Bring it in very quickly, wasting no time. The mark taken there by Edwards. Deep in defence, goes short. And again, it's with Tom Powell, who chips up towards half back, And McCreary has it. We saw him with South Adelaide this year. Sharpshooter himself. Hasn't had a lot of chance in front of goal tonight. As the persistence continuing. Chamberlain, after it was knocked down to him by Hurd, his kick was partly smothered. As bring it back towards the wing now. Knocked down. Again opens the door for Chamberlain. His little chip kick to 50, and that's better. And on the mark there is Durden, who looks up. He knows this would test his distance, so he goes short. And that's really the clever thing to do. And the mark taken by Hamilton. So Liam Hamilton. 
still looking for their goal number three in this contest, Team Hearn. Hamilton's a fair way out, man on the mark about probably close to 40. Hamilton will kick from just inside 50 into the breeze, or what breeze there is. Four and a half gone in this final quarter. Hamilton starts it right, stays right, and in the end, Team Grundy will come away with it. They take possession and come out here and find Beacon. Beacon now just where on the paint where the 50-metre uh, arc there, you can see, meets the boundary line. And kicks in board, finds a target there. In uh, Young gets the ball back in the 1-2. Beacon chipping short. Ball might turn over here. It does on this occasion. Coates kicking it forward. Doomsley tries to trap the ball. Spills a bit further forward than that. And now uh, some Chain of Hambles ends up with uh, Chamberlain. He's had a bit of the ball in this last quarter. Goes back by hand to Robbins. He chips in board. Uh, but the intercept mark has been taken by Big uh, Smith on this occasion. He chips out wide. Looking for Nelligan, coming across, competing well on that occasion was Kramer. Nelligan comes back with second effort and lays a strong tackle and will get a stoppage at left half forward here for Team Hearn. They're 2 9 21. Team Grundy 10 15 75. Six minutes gone in the uh, final quarter. 25 minutes is the length of the quarter as Newchurch takes possession, wheels around in board, opens up his vision and finds a player free there in Durden, 75 metres out from goal. Goes back, he's got a leading option presenting up and he finds that target quite nicely there in Finn Hurd. And he will go back and line up a shot for goal from about 45 metres out. And uh, having seen him play during the year, Danny, I think you think he's got the range to be able to cover this, this journey into the breeze. Yeah, you'd think so. He's a pretty good kick. Um, I think the accuracy is just going to test him as it has all of Team Hearn tonight. Let's have a look as he crosses across the 50 metre line. Releases from 48. It's on target, but it's not quite there distance-wise. Karupas did well to get the uh, a hand of the ball, and it goes across the line for a behind there to, uh, to Team Heard. They're 10th behind. They're two goals, 10, 22, as the kick comes in now towards Poulter. Feeds off by hand. Uh, team Grundy immediately forward of centre now to uh, Murley. Handball to Beacon. He gets slung in the tackle. He gets the handball off to Poulter before doing so. And he wins a free and they take the uh, beacon and they take the advantage, Poulter. And he may have been slung in a tackle as he got the kick forward. Umpire pays the advantage to Young. Wills in board. Got a target there. Manny Liddy, 50 out from goal. Steps around one. Sh flying snap on goal. Is not going to score and goes across the boundary line there where it will be thrown in. Seven minutes gone in the final quarter. 53 points to lead to Team Grundy. So deep inside that forward 50. For Team Grundy, dangerous position for them from the way they've banged on the goals. Hearing one it down, only as far as Liddy. Now a chance to clear for right. Goes to Newchurch. Newchurch just chips up towards half back, looking for and finding a teammate. So, a little chip kick back to Newchurch. Happy to go down that outer wing, Team Hearn. Eight minutes gone in this final term as Mark taken by Watson. who started this short pass. McCreary shows some toe. A high kick inside 50. And a good mark by Beacon, deep in defence, for Team Grundy, he goes short, nearly turns it over there, went through the hands of Robbins, but Team Grundy can go with a long kick towards 50 and a very nice mark pulled in there by Emmett. Still searching for goal number five, he's got a loose man top of the goal square, he goes in that direction and Murley chips in and takes the mark, 15 out, slight angle, and he can go back and line up for his first to push this lead out in excess well, almost in excess of 10 goals. If he's successful, it'll be 59 points. So Cooper Murley has pushed it away to the left for a behind. So margin now 54 points, nine gone, fourth quarter. 
Good intercept mark there from, from Beacon, wasn't it? Yeah. Start of that play. Just uh, You've seen a bit of him do a bit of that during the year, drift in and, and take those marks, Danny. Yes, yeah, certainly. He was one that really impressed me this college season. And um, can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, he's a, he's a bottom major, actually, uh, Cooper. So he's not eligible until next year's draft because we play in next year's under-18 state competition. But uh, developing really nicely as a, uh, as a tall back. He plays a bit in the mould of young Will Day that's gone to Hawthorne this year and even Andrew Mackey the, uh, the years prior. Play a similar sort of game in the way he marks the ball. Um, left footer and, and uh, able to not scared to pick off the, the type of kick that he went for there through the middle of the ground sometimes they'll come off, on that occasion they didn't but uh, yeah an exciting prospect I think uh, clubs will find as the ball goes inside forward 50 it's big hearing that takes the mark he's got an option inside 50 and he's found him in Liam Hamilton uh, had a couple of shots on goal in that uh, second quarter, uh, third quarter should I say Liam Hamilton and only able to register one behind during that time, so he becomes the ch he gets the chance now to be only the second goal kicker in tonight's game for Team Hearn. Comes in, he's got a good look at this one from right behind Liam Hamilton, pokes it out left, and it stays out left, and through for a minor score. Yeah, as I said earlier, they just can't take their they haven't been able to take their opportunities, uh, Team Hearn, have they? They certainly haven't. It's been a not that they haven't had them, they just have missed a lot of shots on goal, whereas. Team Grundy have been quite accurate as Poulter's kick pulled in here by Holder. Members wing, it's evident an oval. 14 minutes exactly to go in this game. Mark taken by Clifton. Goes further afield to Liddy. Got Nelligan lurking, he ignores him, searching for Grubb. He couldn't quite complete it. And out of play, it will go for the throw in. Deep in the forward 50 arc for. Team Grundy, who lead by 53 points. As Carey in the ruck against Potter. Potter slapped it down only as far as Nelligan. High kick from that player back towards the goals. And happy to rush it through was Parrish for the rush behind. So it is a 54-point lead to Team Grundy as we approach the 12-minute mark of this last quarter. 54 points. So the kick in now up the middle there. Mark taken by a Lake. Feeds off by Hander McCreary. Bounces off one and then a second. Opponent to maintain possession of the ball. Gives it off by hand to Robbins. He steps around one. Goes long up the line. Kicks his team's got a two on one in that contest and it's taken there by Hurd. Kicks the ball in board. No mark taken on this occasion. Beacon now by hand. Feeds it out wide to Wanganeen. Off one step, he launches a beautiful pass inboard to Nelligan. He can, he can send the ball outside to Holder. It's a good kick. Holder takes the mark, plays on immediately, gives it off to Grubb by hand, and his kick inside 50 finds a free target in Will Spain, who is heading back towards goal. And again, good, good ball skills um, uh, from the, uh, the team in red enable them to take the ball all the way inside 50, where Horsnell was able to take the, uh, take the mark now. And the youngster from uh, Glenelg will line up from only 25 metres out on a slight angle. Cooper Horsnell comes in and puts it through. It's a nice finish there from Horsnell for a good piece of play there from Team Grundy. And they've kicked their 11th. They're 11 7 Team Hearn is 2 11 a 60-point margin. And you can quite clearly see the difference between the sides there with the skill execution by by the team in red. Yeah, certainly their movement going forward re was really quite impressive, um, just quite skillful, and, and they kind of knew where each other were, were going to be as well, which was really impressive, and um, yeah, finished it off with a nice goal. Nice movement again from Team Grundy, young Horsnell finishing it off with his first. It was back in the middle, getting up high, Potter won it down. Powell infringed, will get the free kick. Dishes it off. Chance for Team Hearn to go inside 50. Knockdown. Here are the crummers. Comes out to Murphy, who hooks it back. And Murphy, I tell you what, has scored a beauty. Ty Murphy with his first. And the long-awaited third goal for Team Hearn as it comes at the 14-minute mark of this last quarter. But 
it was well worth the wait. 11 17 83 to 3 11 29. Great individual effort there, Danny, by Ty Murphy. Yeah, that was a really good goal. Speaking of uh, good pieces of movement, too, that, that was quite nice by Team Hearn. Unfortunately, we haven't seen too many of those, but um, yeah, that was really good and, and a really good finish as well. Kick two of their three goals from that pocket tonight as uh, Team Hearn, if we remember uh, the check side effort yes, from Brody in Lake quarter, in the. Yeah. Uh, in the second quarter from there was a, was a ripper as uh, Big Ryan uh, looks to win the uh, centre clearance. He can't uh, trap the ball. Nelligan can. Throws it on his left boot. Sends it inside 50. Carey. Ball bounces over his head. He can't take uh, possession on that occasion. Parrish gets tackled immediately and we'll see a stoppage 20 metres out from goal for uh, uh, Team Grundy as... Uh, ball is taken now by Poulter, gets a handball back in board, can't find the target he was going for there in Spain he can get a handball out to Nelligan he does likewise to Clifton shot on goal, well I'll tell you what over the back of the pack it's Wanganeen that's come in and socked that goal, that was an incredibly gifted amount of talent the way he uh, uh, thought that one through to soccer that goal through, Clifton's shot on goal looked like it was going through Danny, but Nasiah Wanganeen just cruised on in and casually soccered the ball through uh, from midair. It's a wonderful uh, piece of execution. Yeah, I love seeing that. I love seeing players just uh, use their natural flair and talent. And, um, yeah, I guess these types of games really give them the opportunity to do that too. And, and as I mentioned um, before, what, as I've mentioned previously, um, college games do the same. They, they definitely allow these players to, to play on their natural ability and um, some don't need too much coaching, do they? They certainly don't, and I think Wanganeen's a classic example of that. 60 points, the margin now. Team Hearn, 16 minutes gone in this fourth quarter. They go forward. Team Grundy, resolute in defence, knocking it down. There's Beacon, who's been so good. Fired out the handball. Robbins was good, got it up to Powell. Powell's little kick was a good one. That's marked by the big fella, Hearing, who was best to field for Norwood in the under-18s grand final. Their big win over Sturt. He can go back, Nathan Hearing, and line up for his first. The fourth, if he's successful for Team Hearn. It'd be amazing if he waited all that time. They managed to reward us with a couple of goals. In just a few minutes, Hearing, confidence, just pushes it away to the right, though. So another behind resulting. And that margin now, 59 points. As it comes back in for Team Grundy. Trapped nicely by Murley. A little give over the top. And Spain's got it on this member's wing. What about a bounce? He's got to handle it now, and he does. Hits his teammate a real task there. He's wrapped up strongly by Edwards, is Liddy. And the ball up will result. Perhaps a tad lucky in the end not to be pinged on the ball was, there, John. Yeah. 17 and a half gone, 69 points. The margin in favour of the team in red, Team Grundy. Ball's camped inside the centre square where we see a repeat stoppage. Now the handball comes out to Newchurch. He fends off and gives it off to Murphy. He bullets one to the top of the 50 metre mark. Lake takes a free kick, plays on immediately, releases the ball from the paint at 50 and well positioned to take this mark will be heard. Over the ball uh, was kicked well over the back there to give him an opportunity to take an uncontested mark. Top of the goal square and Finn Hurd, well I know there's a little bit of breeze there but surely he goes back and posts a much belated fourth goal for Team Hearn as the clock ticks over 18 minutes in this final quarter. Yes, he does. Goes back, no problems there whatsoever. And uh, Finn Hearn gets his name in the goal-kicking list. So let's have a look at the score now. Team Gr uh, Hearn move on to four goals, 12-36. Team Grundy, 12-17-89. So 63 points is the margin. And uh, Team Grundy led by 53 points at three-quarter time. So they've been able to um, extend their lead in this quarter as they've done every quarter so far. Yeah, definitely. Their, their movement and their clearance work just seems to be a class above Team Hearn at the moment and, and has been all game. And um, It's good to see Team Hearn get a little bit of reward because they have had a fair few opportunities, so it is good to see them get that goal. But, um, yeah, definitely Team Grundy a, a class above. As they went into the ruck there through Smith umpire's whistle is gone. And the ball will come back. It's going to be a free to Team Grundy. Clifton's got it. Drives towards half forward. Almost 
pulling in the mark down there, Holder. Good pressure on his opponent. He slaps it out. Holder goes in again. Little handball into open space, hoping for Liddy to run onto it. He did. He was tackled to ground. Parrish applying the pressure. Does well. Knocks it away from Holder. Got a handball up. Comes out here to Durden. Clearing kick towards half-back. McCreary sort of just nudged out of it. But it was a good mark in the end there to Karupas. Nick Karupas driving his team inside for the big collision of bodies. So the chance for Team Hearn to clear out towards half-back. And they can come further afield towards this member's wing where Lake has got it. Just a couple of goals, as we said. We're about to hit the 20-minute mark in this final quarter. Just five minutes to play. As Lake drives it towards half-forward, getting up unopposed, though, and pulling down a good mark is Fairbrother. Going to go laterally to Dumasny. Made him do a little bit of work, but he was good enough to get on the end of it. And Dumasny on uh, the non-preferred left. Nice piece of skill there. Chips it inboard. Keeps possession of the ball now. McNamara kicking it long. And Parrish will be well positioned there to take the intercept mark ahead of Luke Young. On this occasion, he chips short and finds right. He's looking for spare players fall to the ball. He's got a couple of options out this grandstand side, but he's missed the target on that occasion. Turnover now is picked up by Young. Heads in board to Smith. He's got an option short in board in Dumasny. Just about the best player on the ground perhaps today. Zach Dumasny wheels around, kicks it long, top to, to the top of the square, over the head of Emmett. It's picked up well though, opportunistically by Murley. Snap on goal from 12 metres out is just hooked across the face of goal and through for a minor score. Two behinds tonight to Cooper Murley and Team Grundy and an accurate 12 goals, 18. That's 90 leading Team Hearn on 4 12, 36. So it's a, uh, what are we, 54 point margin now, 21 minutes gone as Robbins brings the ball in for Team Hearn. Robbins towards half back. Parrish was up. Kramer at the back took it, was wrapped up by Poulton. Got it back out there to McCreary, but he had it knocked away from him. And we'll see a throw in as we're about to hit 21 to 21 and a half, 22 minutes in this last quarter. So we start to think about the better players on the ground. And um, I think for uh, uh, Team Grundy, you know, Nelligan and, and, and Beacon have probably yeah, been, been quite they've prominent. They've been very good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dormersney as well has, has had a fair bit of the footy. And the forwards too, Holder and Emmett. Six goals between them. Parrish couldn't pick it up at ground level. Came out towards Poulter, who hooks it back to forward 50 arc. Powell. Now it comes the way of Chamberlain. Back towards Powell. Linking up again with Chamberlain. Lodato. Cross the face of goal. Will come off in the end. Just pulling down a good mark. And Lodato again linking in. Bring it out wide to half back. A little short pass and some run now for Team Hearn as they come towards this wing position. Handball over the top, long kick Edwards inside 50, but it will fall short. And the rebound on now for Team Grundy as Clifton's got it at half back at defensive 50, just settling things down. Goes with a long kick back towards the wing position. Knocked down, Spain crumbed it very nicely. Got a handball off to Poulter. Thought about going back to Spain now, just hooks it back inside 50 over the head of Emmett. And getting in there, taking the saving mark in defence was Duke. So, a couple of minutes left in this contest. He kicks out wide, and Chamberlain is free out near the boundary line, takes the mark. Chips back in, board, oh, just finds his target there, and Draper able to take the ball low down. At his ankles, he'll go uh, across ground now towards Robbins. Camp deep inside, defensive 50. He's going to chip the ball out wide. Finds his target in uh, Coates. He plays on immediately. He does likewise and finds his target there in Murphy. Feeds by hand to Kramer. He does likewise now to keep the ball drifting forward to receive it back in the 1-2 from Hamilton. But they may have come unstuck. They have as it's picked up now by O'Loughlin. Wills in board. Finds Nelligan. 
He's going to go laterally to Beacon. Beacon takes the mark. Chips in board. Uh, turnover taken by McCreary in front of Poulter. Kicks inside. 50. Didn't quite hit the target in Lake. He took the ball cleanly on the half volley, though, and got immediately tackled. And we'll see a stoppage 45 metres out now from the team Grundy goal. 54 points their lead. 24 and a half minutes gone. 30 seconds left in this game. As there's a whistle on play... Uh, from off the ball, it looks like what is what there's going to be a free to it's coming down the other end of the ground almost. So it's going about 40 meters back out away from the ball and going to Kramer. Uh, so he'll get the kick inside 50 dying seconds of this game now. Ball goes to the back of the pack, snap on goal from Powell. Ball goes across the face of goal and won't score and goes out of bounds without being touched. So Cooper Beacon. We'll end the game with the ball in his hand for Team Grundy. And they have won this contest quite convincingly. 12 goals, 18, uh, 90. The team coached by Ben Nelson has defeated the Ben Kane coach, Team Hearn, for 12, 36. So